Well, good evening, friends. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report without you guys, as well as you ladies. You know, you know, you know, this does not work. I'm sorry. It has been a long, long day. I got up about 13 hours ago, was down here at 6 a.m. doing my morning video, drove about 150 miles down the road, ended up fixing a deck. Uh, driving my ass back home, getting back home, unloading the truck and having to fix some shit here at the house. And now I'm trying to get caught up and get you caught up with everything that is the Dallas Cowboys. And a little note for all of you channel members, uh, my wonderful bride, my wonderful wife, my partner in crime, Tracy, is going through all of the channel members uh, where you filled out the profile and stuff, and she's going to be sending you a response because some of you, you only put a partial address and stuff on there, so she's going to be asking for some more information. And any of those people who are in the DMV area, the DMV area, that are, are channel members that might be interested in actually coming over here to Joe Boo's Man Cave, um, send a message to Tracy and say, hey, you know, because I know like Sheila Neal, I know you're not very far away. Uh, Sheila, I know you're not very far away. Um, I'm trying to remember there's somebody who we were looking at today because we were going through these while we are going up the road who's in Chesapeake. And I said, how far is Chesapeake? Because I think she actually sent and said, I'd like you to come over for a game. So, you know, be looking for these emails and stuff on there. And if you are a channel member, go to the community tab. And there is a post for uh, channel members only to go through to get on our website. So that way we can keep touch with you guys and, you know, make sure you get your shot glasses and all that kind of stuff. So. The Dallas Cowboys, it's Wednesday. Tuesday is the off day for, of course, the players to kind of go out and do, you know, things they want to do in the community or just relax, go bowling, hang out, maybe just sleep in and just recover, whatever. But come Wednesday, the Cowboys had a scale back practice today. And Tyron Smith was officially limited in Wednesday's practice. But the good thing is, is they're, they're saying that Tyron Smith is getting close to being there and there's hopes that he will be here able to play on Sunday. We are hoping that he is. Now this of course creates a little bit of a problem, but the great kind of problem for you. One, Tyron Smith is when healthy one of the best tackles in football. And now you've got competition for right tackle between Terrence Steele and um, Lyle Collins. And I have no problem with that whatsoever. I want the best five guys on the field. Now, where, where I would like to maybe look at some things is Connor Williams. Um, you know, he has good games and bad games, but it seems like most games is always penalty filled, and it may be that the referees just, you know, they just love giving him the laundry. I, I, don't, I don't know what it is, but it seems like he's a magnet for flags. Some of them are deserved. Some of them you kind of say, man, that's some bullshit. But whatever it is, we're getting too many penalties on on Connor Williams, but you know, be that as it may. The other good news is Amari Cooper. Okay, Amari Cooper with his hamstring. Um, you know, he he was listed on it, full participant. Zeke Elliott, full participant. C. D. Lamb with his tricep. You know, the tricep contusion. You know, he was bandaged up and see. You know, I, I'm I'm thinking that maybe this was payback. If you watch the game, I remember Dak Prescott on one of the touchdowns came in and he hit, you know, uh, the CD on the arm and he was like, oh, you know, hey, wait, yeah. right? Because it may be actually pay that may have been payback for when CD kind of head butted him in the cheek with his helmet on and, you know, <laughs> drew blood, you know? So maybe that was kind of, yeah, okay, you want to get me in the face? <laughs> okay, I got you back. Anyway. CD, full participant. Cedric Wilson and Nashon Wright, of course, with the hamstring, was a full participant. And Will Gear with the knee. Uh, all were full participants with the exception of Tyron Smith. And it looks like we're going to get our kicker back off of the COVID list as well. So Greg the Leg should be back at practice too. So we're getting everybody there. Demarcus Lawrence, of course, and Navelle Gallimore. They're still working out on the bands and getting, you know, we keep hearing they're close. You know, Navelle Gallimore is, you know, he's tweeting out there. I can't wait to get back out there. My, my, my friend, you know, my buddies and all that. They're getting close to returning. And this, oh, my God, this is really going to be a big boost for our defense. When we start getting these guys, 
Um, there was like the way. What the heck? So before we start this video, I don't know why that keeps happening with Philly 500. He is the king dingbat. He's like the ghost in the machine here. Um, it was an interesting article in uh, about the Dallas Cowboys rookie class and how their numbers, you know, uh, percentage wise, I think we're around nine percent last year. I think uh, our rookies played about twelve percent of the snaps, and that they're kind of getting scaled back, and that's because you're beginning to get some more of the veterans that are coming back. You know, as we end up getting uh, Tristan Hill coming back, ends up taking some of the snaps away from like Quentin Bohannon, who was inactive this past week, or, you know, guys like OC and things like that. And, you know, when you get Navelle Gallimore, that's going to take some of those snaps away. And, of course, Demarcus Lawrence coming back, that's going to change some things. I don't know that they're going to take too many away from Micah Parsons, but they may want to give him a few more, you know, snaps to rest so that way they can just kind of release the Kraken to go after that quarterback's ass. So here we are, Dak Prescott, my quarterback, my teammate, and you say anything about him, it's not fair. Dak, of course, became the FedEx player, air player of the week for all the NFL. The whole NFL, AFC, NFC, everything, everything, okay, off of that performance that we had this week where he had 77% completions. He is smoking. Not bad for a garbage-ass quarterback as you guys, some of you guys. You you know who you are, how some of you guys like to call him. Interesting thing is all of a sudden how, if you're a conspiracy theorist, believe that the NFL wanted Kansas City to elevate. You know, maybe they had Aaron Rodgers go ahead and get COVID. So that way, Green Bay would lose to Kansas City, and then Kansas City gets the big win this past week. So now all of a sudden, Kansas City is back with Pat Mahomes. Pat Mahomes, who, interestingly enough, was AFC Offensive Player of the Week. Not Air Player of the NFL. AFC, only the AFC side. He's playing much better than where he was earlier in the season. He was at one point leading the NFL with interceptions. I think he's got 10. 10! 10 right now. And so he is definitely on the upswing right now. And we have what people are asking. Will this be a statement game? And they are asking Zeke Elliott. And this was Zeke Elliott's response. It seems like y'all ask us that every week. Every week, Zeke Elliott said. This is another football game. Every team we play is a very good football team. If we go out there and get a win on the road in a hostile environment, I think that that would be a statement. Very true. I, I, can't, I can't disagree with that whatsoever. And, of course, it's being billed as Pat Mahomes versus Dak Prescott. And, quite frankly, it's really more like Pat Mahomes versus Micah Parsons. And Micah Parsons was asked, you know, are you worried about where he's going with the ball? He's like, I'm not worried about where he's going with the ball. I'm trying to get him. I don't worry about where the ball's going. I'm worried about getting him. Just to let you know, Micah Parsons has a list, and Pat Mahomes is on it. He's on it. Everybody. That's the opposition is on it. So we'll see where we go there. Now, Dak has been playing so well, so well. Some people have been confusing Dak Prescott and what he's doing this year with Pat Mahomes and what Pat Mahomes has been doing. In fact, In fact, let me pull this up. Dak was confused for Pat Mahomes. And let's hope that they get this straight now. <laughs> That's how fast. Come on, let's go. I want to pray for Dak Prescott. He's my favorite quarterback in my whole entire world. Wow, yes. I want his phone number. <laughs> I do too. Can I get his phone number? Look over there. What's up? Hi. What's up, big man? Hi. How you doing? Fine. What's your name? Aiden. 
Aiden? Mm -hmm, so, you're Patrick Mahomes. You're Patrick Mahomes <laughs> still? Whose jersey is this? I mean, I'm not Patrick Mahomes, or are you Dak Prescott? Yeah. So, good to see you. So good to see you. <laughs> so you can't keep getting me and Patrick confused. Yeah, you got I don't have that. the hair, he's got the hair. So he's got the hair like you. Dak Prescott. I'm Dak Prescott. It's good to see you. Okay, y'all remember that. You remember that. Yeah, it, it's easy to confuse the two of them because, you know, they're playing, like, really, really good. And I can't wait to see them on the field. And I'm betting that Diggs' son now knows the difference between Pat Mahomes and Dak Prescott. So we're getting this whole thing built up between the two of them. You know, this will be the whole hype, of course. You know, you've already got Nick Wright, who's going crazy that uh, Kansas City is back and they're ready to go into the Super Bowl. Although, here was the interesting piece on this was, he was also saying that by his tears, that the Dallas Cowboys were the best team in football. And the way you kind of look at that is, it, that's the perfect way to set it up. Because if they win against the Cowboys, he can turn around and say, oh, look, they beat the best team in football. Right? If they lose, he said, well, you know, we lost to the best team in football. There's no shame in that. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. It's really interesting. So that's where we are right now with the news, of course, with the Dallas Cowboys. Um, I'm up to speed. You're up to speed. And... Um, I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to get cleaned up. I'm going to kick back for a few minutes, and then I will get my fireside chat together. I've got to respond to some more of you great channel members and uh, see what's what and who's who. I can't believe that it's already hump day, that hump day is almost gone, and tomorrow is already the beginning of week number eight. Um, we were going to be doing the um, – pick segment tonight but i got home so late um, i'm going to talk to t uh Stu as soon as i get finished with this and see we'll probably do it tomorrow before the game and we'll probably be live streaming the game tomorrow night as well because the, the season's flying by it is literally flying by and and i'm getting kind of sad who i'm mark holmes and i appreciate each and every one of you guys and uh Let's get ready to get out of here. And um, hear from our owner. Come to my mind. We had a great run of it. Uh, he's a great coach, and I'm uh, proud to have him as a friend and proud to have had the times that we had. We, we, uh, we just had a great experience. Can you answer Switch's question now? What? Do you think you can answer Barry's question now? I've never, I've never been able to know why. Uh, I'm fucking done.